extracting and saving lives. Welcome to The Factor Uncensored. Tonight, we start with what many people only see in movies, extracting people from around the world in very dangerous regions. My first guest, Brian Stern with Project Dynamo, talks about the unfiltered, raw truth about being a part of a rescue team. First of all, Brian, how did you get into this field of work? Uh, well, thanks for having me, Isaiah. Uh, I actually did this sort of thing for many, many years, almost a quarter of a century for our government uh, in, in, in and out of the military. So this kind of um, the, the, the kind of operations and the and the the um, the sensational parts of it and the danger part of it has um, actually been pretty much my entire adult life. Dynamo was started in August 2021 in my living room in response to the failed, Afga uh, failed evacuation and withdrawal of Afghanistan. And we were supposed to be around for a couple, two, three weeks. And here we are almost two years later where we've we've actually had to change our logo three times because we we keep expanding and our demand and and the uh, our requests keep increasing and increasing and increasing to the extent that we have operations ongoing now in seven or eight countries, mm -hmm. Afghanistan, Ukraine, Russia, uh, and Sudan are the big ones, but we even have things going on in places like Venezuela and Yemen and, uh, and Iran and some other places. And essentially, Dynamo operates where the U.S. government is not. That's the best way to think about this. And for those who may need a picture painted of exactly what do you do when you hit the ground, when you go into these, in many cases, very dangerous countries, putting your life on the line and many of your volunteers' lives on the line, uh, what do you do exactly? Paint us a picture of how it works in helping families escape from war-torn areas and very dangerous areas. Sure. It, it It's, there's no such thing. We're not cookie cutter is what we're not. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, the way, the way the fire department in New York city works is fundamentally different than the way the fire department in Wallacoochee, Mississippi works, right? It's different formats. It's all still fire, but the, a lot of variables there change. So the way we do things in Afghanistan is different than how we do things in Sudan, let's say, even though there, there are a lot of similarities. But essentially what we do is we, we, uh, we, in Afghanistan, we showed up at the tail end of a mess. Mm -hmm. In Ukraine, we got there over a month before the war even started. And we built our mousetrap, if you will, a very complicated, uh, complicated um, set of circumstances and infrastructure designed to do a magic trick. So mm -hmm. think of David Copperfield. David Copperfield made the Statue of Liberty disappear in front of 3,000 people. Probably he didn't actually make it disappear. Well, that's exactly how I approached the Russians and the Taliban and a lot of these groups out there that if you get caught with an American passport, you are in tremendous peril, tremendous peril, uh, maybe even death. So we have, to, we have to set up things in such a way where we don't get caught in places where there's not a lot of help, a lot of bad guys, and they all hate us. What we're not, what we're not, is we're not out there with machine guns and body armor, and I'm not an assassin. Uh, we're a rescue team. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not out there. We're not looking for ambushes. We walk between the raindrops and avoid the enemy at all costs. It's quite the opposite. So when we work, it actually looks, if I do my job right, it looks like nothing. It looks benign. Mm -hmm. That way we don't get in trouble because life, the, the, the preservation of life and safety is our number one concern and also being ethical and moral. I'm not trying to get into a gunfight with the Russian army. That's not good for anybody, honestly. Absolutely I mean, not. And so when you're there, though, and you have worked for during your military service time, you have worked for the United States in doing this, but now you are on your own. That, that's the big difference is is typically uh, in the intelligence community, even if you're deep, 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 dark, 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 there's still someone to call. Even if it's, hey, I've been arrested, there's still someone and a group of people that know where you are and what you're doing. There may not be a real net, but there's some, but at least there's the feeling of a net. Mm -hmm. And if nothing else, whole buildings of people dedicated to try and help you if something goes wrong in places like afghanistan you push a button and apache helicopters show up right and 
seals show up and whatever, whatever, every toy and resource that we have. The way Dynamo works, we don't have any of that. We are completely alone. There is no mommies, no daddies. There is nobody. I work in a place designed literally where there's not even an embassy for me to run to. So there's, there is no safe haven whatsoever. That's got to be scary, Brian, because you're almost on a tightrope with no safety net there at all to catch you. Um, what keeps you going? What keeps you doing this? Well, uh, I get this question a lot, and uh, I never know how to answer it because it's, 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 it's actually hard to explain. I was a 9-11 first responder. I, was, I survived both collapses. I was buried alive twice. And people forget that the morning of 9-11, the original first responders were civilians. They were just business people that were in the area that earlier that morning probably would have pushed you on the train tracks if you walked too slow, mm -hmm. right? But, but when disaster strikes, part of being American is we help. We always show up, always, in at the community level, at whatever level, right? Uh, that's, that's part of it. That's part of it. You know, I get asked the question all the time about politics. We're not Republicans. We're not Democrats. We're Americans. This is not a political thing. This is not, that's not what this is about. The better Americans doing what Americans should do and do do, historically. The other part of it is, is I took an oath many, 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 many years ago when I was a kid before I had gray hair, a long, long, long time ago, to support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the people of the United States. That oath doesn't end. That commitment doesn't end. When, when you're in the Army, when I was in the Army, God forbid you leave one of your guys behind in training, my drill sergeants would, would beat, you know, beat the snot out of me. It's a very real, it's not a metaphor. It's not a euphemism. It's not a saying when we say we don't leave our people behind. Where I come from, we really mean it. And I've spent a, life, a lifetime doing this. I missed a lot of Christmases, a lot of birthdays, a lot of holidays away from home, happily for the people of the United States and for Americans. To stop that and to say no when I know that I can help and that I also know no other help is coming is against my grain. I can't really do that, you know? It's it's like no, it's like any it's like any other thing. There if you if you saw two if you saw a guy beating up a girl on a sidewalk somewhere, some people walk by and look the other way. Some people might call 911 and say, hey, something's going on. And some people might get involved and say, hey, hey, sir, please stop beating this woman. Mm -hmm. And if that bad guy turns his sights on me, well, those mistakes are self-correcting usually. And I'm still here and the bad guys still are not. So um, <laughs> still to come here on The Factor Uncensored, Brian shares some insight on why he and others take on the dangerous job. And welcome back to The Factor on Censored, bringing hope to the lives trapped in war-torn zones. One extractor says that's the thing that keeps him going and doing those rescues. It's not easy, but he says it's worth it. Let's take a listen. For those who are wondering when it comes to uh, reuniting these families, what is that like for you when you see someone back in the arms of their loved ones after you played a crucial, important role in getting them back. I, I, I'm happy you asked that. It is by far my favorite part of this work. There is, I, I wish I were a poet because many organizations uh, claim to be rescue organizations. And really what they are is they're coordinating. They know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy, right? We're not that. We, we're on the streets. You know, we've rescued six, over 6,000 people. About 5,500 of those people are in my phone and I've personally met myself. Wow. So we laugh with them. We cry with them. We talk to their families. We work with their families. We, 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 um, we, th these are not numbers to us. These are real people that I get to know. In the month of May, Project Dynamo has rescued almost 150 American citizens the month of May. That's more than the Tampa Fire Department where I live. Yeah, right. that is. When you say it like that, so we, we rescued 68 American babies from the war zone. The feeling of delivering, literally delivering an American baby stuck in the war zone to a mommy and daddy who are sitting in Poland, who have been scared to death 
scared beyond i mean i don't know if you have kids but imagine if your kid was stuck in a war zone and someone brought you your kid back those relationships are forever life-changing and life impacting and um with some of our more sensational cases where we've broken people out of jail who were tortured and raped by the russians and some really terrible horrible really bad bad stories really the dark side of humanity type stuff where there is no hope and hope is completely lost and the, the story starts off terrible being able to reunite those people with their mothers and their fathers and their husbands and their wives there is nothing on this earth like it there, there just isn't there, there's no it, it, it's it's uh there, there, there is i i've had a pretty wild life and lived been a lot of places done a lot of crazy things and there is nothing on this earth being able to look into a mother's eyes and say don't worry i'll be right back and then days later here's your son and there was no hope before that there's nothing like it i can only imagine and for those who are wondering you know you've talked about constant constantly being in danger when you go into some of these countries like afghanistan and sudan so what has been that almost gave you pause your most dangerous encounter your most dangerous situation that you have encountered in rescuing or trying to rescue someone um Oh, that's a tough question. That's like, uh, you know, what's your favorite movie? Uh, <laughs> there's a lot. Yeah. Um, the Russians have sent a hitman to, uh, the Russians have sent assassins and hitmen to kill me uh, four times that we know about. One time wow. we have on video. We have one on video. Um, and we were able to get in front of that problem before. But while we felt very in control, still things go wrong and that could be bad uh so that th those times have been very scary because those are professionals who know th those are people who are killing people and they know how to do it mm -hmm. so uh those are that's scary i took artillery fire the russians uh blew up a checkpoint that i was at trying to kill us in april of last year uh, april of 2022 that was pretty scary but even still going through taliban tsa i mean we're we're on the streets of kabul and I go through Taliban T. It's what I call it, Taliban TSA with an Amer as a, with an American passport and an Afghan visa in my wallet. Recognizing that in my previous life I've done some pretty terrible things for God and country against the Taliban. That's pretty nerve wracking, also because we're on their turf. And you got to remember where I work. There's no escape. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere. There's nowhere to go. When I'm when I'm operating in Ukraine, I'm 31 hours away by car from anything that looks like a friend and you can't fly. It's why we don't get into gunfights. It's that people ask, well, how come you don't carry guns and stuff? If I got into a gunfight 31 hours away and I had to do a running gun battle, I would need a dump truck of ammo behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to The Factor Uncensored. Less is better. The co-founder of a nonprofit extraction organization explains why they don't carry heavy artillery when extracting people from dangerous regions. I'm better off getting arrested and dealing with it in opposed to getting into a gunfight. So, um, but we've been ambushed. Our, we've had vehicles shot up. We've had some pretty terrible things. My, but honestly, that part isn't what scares me. All those crazy stories isn't what scares me. What scares me is failing. Mm -hmm. What scares me is knowing when I'm talking with some of these families, we did a set of premature uh, babies, uh, Lenny and Moisha from Atlanta, Georgia, and they were born premature in Ukraine, Americans. They're on life support and feeding tubes and the whole nine yards. The first week or so of the war, you, we couldn't get an incubator. We made an incubator out of a beer cooler, out of a refrigerator bag. Wow. I don't know anything about babies. I know even less about premature babies and baby medicine and all that stuff. I will tell you, this whole patch of gray hair happened from them. <laughs> I, 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 I say it kind of tongue in cheek, but I, that's what stresses me out is failure. Knowing that I'm, the, I'm not the first option. I'm the last resort. We are the end of the line for these families. And um i mean i get choked up just even thinking about it i remember how um the the um their father their father who's a good friend his name is sasha he teaches uh literature at uh university of georgia 
And um, I met him over Zoom. He was in America. I was in Ukraine. And he begged and begged and begged and, and, and pleaded. And I was scared to death, scared to death. We were getting bombed as it was happening. That's not what I was afraid of. I was afraid of losing power in my ambulance and the, and the two boys dying in my care. Wow. That's, that's what scares me. That that's it's those I can deal with the bombs and the blood and the dead bodies and all the terrible things. I'm 25 years doing this. I can handle that. I'm a Purple Heart recipient. Believe me, I've I've seen enough blood to last five lifetimes. I can handle that part. What I can't handle is having to make a call and say, um, we failed or they died or 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 you know we tried and it didn't work. And thus far, Dynamo has never ever had to make that call. We have a hundred percent success rate. Excellent, excellent. So, Brian, obviously, you guys work um, uh, were volunteer doing this. For those in the public who would like to help you guys out, where can they learn more about your organization to get more information? Sure. Pro projectdynamo.org is our website. That's where you can donate. We're five hundred one c three. We're tax deductible. Please help. Number one. Number two. We have uh, social media. I got a whole group of people that do that for me. I'm I'm kind of uh, silly with that stuff, but uh, LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram and all that. Follow us and share our stuff. If everyone that you knew liked us, shared us, and gave a dollar, and they shared it with their people and gave a dollar, I will rescue Americans. Right now, as I talk to you, there are three hundred over three hundred African Americans sitting in Sudan, trapped. Wow. We're the only. We're the only organization to land an airplane and rescue Americans out of Sudan. I could, we landed a Boeing 737 in the middle of the war zone. No problem. With our eyes closed, like a baller. Find Sudan, the word Sudan, on foxnews.com or cnn.com right now. Let me know when you find it. You won't. So because the story is dead, our funding has died, and these airplanes don't pay for themselves. I need public help. I need people to help. There's over 300, Af uh, 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 and the, these are American citizens. Mm -hmm. Most of them San Francisco, Denver, Colorado, New York City, Virginia, Maryland, uh, um, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia. These are folks, their passport looks just like your passport, looks just like my passport. And they're left behind, and I can get them. I just can't afford it. I need your help. And once again, you can go to projectdynamo.org to donate and get more information about that organization.